Welcome to Wash Post Live. I'm David Ignatius, a columnist for the Post. This afternoon, in the third of our three discussions today on the war in Ukraine, I'm joined by France's ambassador to Washington, Ambassador Philippe Etienne. Uh, ambassador Etienne, welcome back to Washington Post. We're glad to have you today. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me again. So, Mr. Ambassador, today we have uh, some significant diplomatic news uh, centered around uh, President Macron, the president of France, who spoke uh, today with President Zelensky of Ukraine and then, with his encouragement, had a 90-minute phone conversation with President Vladimir Putin in Russia. Tell us about those conversations and about where things stand after the the talks that, that your president had today. Thank you, David. I think it is important also to say that there was another coordination between uh, the European and American and G7 uh, leaders uh, because we we keep this very close coordination between all of us. Uh, the purpose, and, and as, as President Zelensky is concerned, uh, he speaks with, with many leaders in the world, and in particular, he has been having many conversations with our president. Um, the call with uh, the Russian president was made to again to uh, um, to, to demand a ceasefire, but also more precisely, also to uh, ask uh, for the immediate uh, stop of uh, attacks against civilian residential areas and uh, uh, against civilian infrastructure and to uh, provide for humanitarian access. France is right now uh, putting forward to the Security Council of the United Nations, or we'll do this uh, very soon, uh, a new resolution on humanitarian access. This is unfortunately now uh, really one of the top priorities, both inside Ukraine and of course for um, the refugees uh, outside. Ukraine. So, Mr. Ambassador, reading the initial accounts of the conversations between uh, President Macron and and, uh, and President Putin, the, uh, President Macron called for a halt on all airstrikes and attacks on civilians, as you said, preservation of civilian infrastructure, road uh, axes uh, uh, south of Kiev. And, mm -hmm. and interestingly, um, according to the account that I have, President Putin uh, confirmed his willingness to, to commit on all three requests that President Macron made to him. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, but we we will see, uh, like um, for other commitments he, he, he made, of course. Uh, uh, we, will, uh, we will see um, um, in the reality what happens. Uh, indeed, you added something also very important, <clears throat> which is to keep open um, one of the roads, at least, of course, uh, um, to uh, to Kiev, and uh, it's um, it's it's really important right now to do this. And uh, again, he will have the Russian leader will have the choice of doing it or not. The fact that he, he committed himself to it uh, in in the in, in the conversation doesn't mean anywhere that he changes his uh, his, uh, his general attitude. Uh, or, but at least this humanitarian um, question and the protection of civilians, uh, we'll see what, what happens. Uh, we, we, we will judge on the reality, as I say, on the ground. As, as you say, uh, this is a situation in which actions matter more than words, but I, mm -hmm. I'm interested in whether President Putin uh, made any commitment to President Macron to, to uh, cease attacks uh, on the civilian population in Kiev, Kharkiv, and other cities where people have been pounded by uh, bombardment today. Mm -hmm. did, did he make a, any commitment to do that? Well, it is a, it is a meaning of what, uh, he, 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 what was discussed. And uh, I'm not following uh, exactly what, what's happening uh, on the ground, but I heard after a certain... Uh, um, period where there was those discussions happening uh, between the two delegations uh, the, again there are uh, there are shootings in Kharkiv for instance and very very 
there and heavy weapons being used. So um, we we'll see. But uh, anyway, it's it's really important to 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 make clear as directly as possible to him and to to tell him what we know is happening and to tell him what we want him to do. So, uh, Mr. Ambassador, just so our viewers will understand where this uh, diplomacy goes next, France will be introducing, uh, if I understood you earlier, a resolution shortly at the Security Council. A and can you be specific as to what uh, the, the points of that resolution will be? Yes, there are two, two tracks here. There was a first resolution uh, vetoed by Russia uh, condemning its, uh, the invasion. And yesterday, the Security Council of the United Nations decided to send the matter to the General Assembly of the United Nations, and uh, it will be discussed uh, this week. Uh, and then there is another uh, issue, which is uh, humanitarian access, uh, which is a priority in such conflicts where the civilians pay such a high tribute, and uh, there are already hundreds of civilians who have lost their lives and we we have to uh, to secure uh, the conformity with international humanitarian law and this is the role also of the security council and this is the reason why we will introduce a second uh, dra draft resolution um, to be uh, hopefully voted as soon as possible uh, and i'm wondering mr ambassador what uh, comes next uh, your president has had a, a channel of communication with President Putin, not just in this crisis, but going back several years. Was there any discussion between them of, of a follow-up conversation, of further uh, discussions about some way to resolve this conflict? Our president has shown that uh, um, he is, uh, he, he, he will not hesitate to engage, uh, to. Uh, to pass the right messages and to, to contribute to a, a, a solution or an improvement of the situation. But at the same time, um, and we, we have made clear that while we have these discussions, first, we, we do it in coordination with the president of Ukraine and also with our allies and our partners. And second, we make more and more uh, decisions which hit and uh, isolate uh, Russia as long as we don't see these requests being followed. And uh, as you have seen, uh, we, we have taken, and France being the, holding the presidents of the Council of the EU has had a very important role, of course, there. We, in one week, we have adopted three, uh, uh, three series of uh, massive sanctions. And uh, we are implementing them, and we are already seeing uh, the results. So we, we are, we are, we will continue to 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 this this uh, action. But uh, of course, if there is a possibility to 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 improve or to solve the situation, we will do it. But we will do it always in coordination with the. Uh, legitimate authorities of Ukraine, and especially with the president of Ukraine, who is a, who has a really an attitude which uh, everybody admires. And uh, before we leave the subject of today's uh, diplomatic conversations, I want to just make sure uh, in the initial conversation that President Macron had with other Western leaders, including President Biden, did he have the full support uh, of those uh, leaders um, in Europe and the United States for making this uh, initiative? There is, a, I, I was not on the call, on the last call, a plur, multilateral, and it was about uh, a lot of other issues, I'm sure. But this is clearly uh, in a, done in a way where we are, because it, it's a condition for our success. We are absolutely closely coordinating everything you are doing, the ones and the others. And it is the reason why it works, by the way, uh, because on, on the issue of sanctions, for instance, the fact that we have been preparing them, even while we were trying to prevent this war, we were preparing our sanctions and it works, as we have seen. So yes, there is a, a, real, a really close coordination 
among the Europeans uh, and between the Europeans and the Americans and with the other partners and allies. So one thing that uh, some analysts have, have noted is that over this uh, first week of, of war, the balance has shifted uh, more towards European action. The United States obviously is, is playing a leading role, but we had Germany uh, coming out and announcing that it was uh, halting progress on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Uh, the European Union uh, has been strongly committed uh, to economic sanctions. France and other European countries work closely on this this morning's remarkable announcement on, on sanctions against the Russian central bank. But we're seeing a, a very uh, strong Europe. And I wonder if if it's right to say that the balance has shifted a little bit so that it's maybe a more equal distribution between uh, Europe and America. Uh, how, how would you how would you read uh, Europe's role over the last week? The role of Europe and especially of the European Union is uh, important and the EU is stronger and has taken strong attitudes uh, compared with previous crises and previous times. The US has always been strong and uh, uh, a leader, but the US can only benefit from having a stronger ally on the European side of the Atlantic. And this is happening now. And at least this is uh, something we, we, can, we can see uh, as positive in these terrible times, because it has played a role, a decisive role in getting to a strong reaction and which has, which bites, which has effects uh, in Russia. I think it is also due to the US and the US administration because all of this has been closely coordinated and we had time to prepare ourselves together. And there was on the US side, a real wish to uh, um, have this coordination in the most effective way. So I think it, it is a positive dynamic that uh, for the US and for the European Union, and indeed, I would go that far to say that you have seen you have seen a, a kind of, a sort of transformation of the European Union with the kind of decision which have been taken, including in the in the, in the field of defense. So yes, it is uh, definitely something which uh, which is impressive. Um, and within the EU, as you said, Germany, but all the, also other countries have moved quite. Uh, uh, decisively, and, and the EU as such is, uh, in this crisis, a very, very important actor which decides quickly on strong measures in close coordination with the United States. So I want to ask you in particular, Mr. Ambassador, about, about Germany. Uh, the French-German relationship is obviously crucial for the European Union. France has, has had a strong military and a willingness to use that military uh, for decades. But Germany has been, been much more reticent, uh, as you know, weary of uh, defense spending. Uh, it was sharply criticized, not just by former President Trump, but by other Americans for not uh, carrying its, its fair share. The announcements of the last several days from Germany about a German willingness to ship lethal weapons to Ukraine and the, the significant increase in the German defense budget are quite extraordinary. And I'd just be interested in your assessment as France's ambassador to Washington about these uh, changes in, in, in Germany in terms of its military stance. Well, <laughs> exactly because I am the French ambassador to, in Washington, I am not the best place uh, to, to, to speak for another country. But actually, it happens I was ambassador in Germany also between 2014 and 2017. And I remember in November 2015, you remember too, David, the terrorist murder, murderous terrorist attacks in, in the center of Paris by, 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 by terrorist groups against uh, our country. And I remember I was there in, then I was in Berlin and the German parliament, the German government and the German parliament decided in a very short time to, to, to answer positively to our request for help, also for military help. 
So uh, I, I think that we have no doubt about, uh, and as, as you said, France and Germany, with their different traditions, histories, are their cooperation uh, is has been from the very beginning a, a fundamental element in the European integration. But I personally ha have had no doubt about the fact that Germany, when we come to a, such a crisis, uh, will do what, what's necessary. But indeed, the decisions taken by Germany in those recent days uh, are quite impressive and, and are very important in this uh, general movement I described of a, a European Union, which is uh, more and more able to be um, to be strong, to be quick, to be a capable ally of the uh, United States when it comes and uh, complementary to NATO, of course. So you have seen also this NATO summit, which was really uh, important and which took also very important decisions. The EU becomes an actor which is um, really up to the task and. I would say, if you consider the whole history of the European Union, not only that France and Germany have always played a very important role together with the other countries, the other member states, but also that the EU has grown, has, a, um, has become stronger through crisis. And so it is also something which is not completely new because of this huge, huge crisis, this even turning point in the history of Europe. We, we see the EU adapting its role and stepping up. I'm interested in the reaction uh, of public opinion in France and other European countries. France, uh, with all of us, has watched the bravery of the Ukrainian people in resisting the Russian invasion, uh, the bravery in particular of President Zelensky. And I wonder if that is going to have any effect on French public opinion on the question of enlargement of the European Union to include the possibility of membership by Ukraine. What do you think? <clears throat> I think that there has been uh, across Europe, but in the world, more broadly, of course, including in the United States, a very strong movement of uh, sympathy. Of, uh, there is. There is a strong emotion which is felt and it is completely understandable and positive. And I think it has also uh, been an element for what has already been decided by the EU. For instance, um, um, the acceleration of the decision uh, concerning uh, SWIFT or the decision to um, make available defensive uh, weapons and uh, equipment for uh, the Ukrainians who so bravely defend their country. So yes, it, 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 it gives uh, this uh, feeling of sympathy. I don't know how it will play out in the future on the, on, uh, the, the question of uh, the enlargement of the European Union, but I'm sure there is this, um, this strong movement of sympathy and emotion in our country, like in, uh, in all the European countries. Ambassador, let's uh, shift our discussion a, a bit to talk about Russia. Uh, it's widely said by analysts uh, here in the United States that uh, President Putin appears to have miscalculated, uh, miscalculated the extent to which Ukrainians would resist the Russian invasion, miscalculated uh, NATO's and Europe's unity with the United States in, in resisting uh, aggression uh, through sanctions and other means. Does France, do your colleagues uh, in the foreign ministry share that assessment that Putin appears to have miscalculated here? Well, it's difficult to know exactly, but apparently, indeed, if you look at how the military operations uh, have started uh, with uh, the, the use of, on the part of the, the, this uh, massive accumulation of military uh, equipment uh, accumulated on the border of Ukraine, it seems pretty clear that there was uh, at least a hope on the Russian side that uh, things would go differently. And um, you're right to say that uh, both the resistance 
of the Ukrainians, which is, of course, the most important on the ground, but also the rapidity and, and, and the strength of our collective reactions to the invasion uh, might have uh, been uh, something which was not completely uh, factored in by, by, the, by the Russian move. And um, it, it must also uh, reinforce our determination to continue to, to be very, very, very firm to, to address this uh, invasion. Your uh, country uh, uh, has traditionally had close cultural relations uh, with Russia, uh, certainly in the, in the pre-communist period. Uh, we uh, remember seeing art exhibitions in Paris mm -hmm. about Paris, Moscow. I'm mm -hmm. wondering what you think um, the effect of, of this invasion and the strong opposition to it, what effect that will have on the Russian public and whether it's likely that we'll see continuing, maybe even increasing protests in Russia against this policy mm -hmm. if, if Putin continues with his war? Well, David, I thought of this myself. I lived in Russia 30 years ago, three years in Moscow with my family. I speak Russian. I, we love the Russian culture, language, literature, and I cannot imagine that the, the, the Russians themselves uh, accept this, even if uh, the access to the information is, is, is made more difficult for them. Uh, I'm sure that this, this action, this invasion, this uh, use of such a force against the a country which is also so close to Russia cannot be, cannot must mu must raise uh, a lot of uh, um, negative uh, reactions in, in Russia itself. Uh, in in spite of the propaganda and uh, every as I said the, the the control of the information and also the 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 the, 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 the repression. So. It's just a guess. We have some signals, of course. We see that in Russia. But you're right to say also that there is a sympathy in Germany, in France, in, in many European countries for these uh, traditional, uh, you know, uh, this, this Russian culture, by the way, not only traditional, the, the creation, cultural creation today. Oh, there, there is this, 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 this bond. And it didn't prevent us to act, but we, we, do, we, we don't want to act against the, the Russian people. We want to act against this policy and this invasion, military invasion of another European country. Let's talk for a moment about one of the dangers that could lie ahead, and that is the, the threat of Russian cyber attacks, which uh, have been experienced by the United States, by, by France, by many countries in Europe in the past. And, and there's concern that uh, as uh, Putin faces such opposition in Ukraine, he may turn to cyber weapons. Uh, tell us about France's preparation for the possibility of such cyber attacks. And do you believe that France, the United States, NATO countries in general should regard such attacks as acts of war, uh, they're certainly going to be damaging under NATO's Article 5 commitment to mutual defense. Well, probably it would depend uh, on, the, on, the, on the scope and the nature of these attacks, but you're right, we are very much indeed uh, aware of this danger. And cybersecurity in general, not only in our relations with, uh, with Russia, but in general, is, has been a growing concern and a, gr and, a, and a topic more and more important for our security cooperation between France and the US and between Europe and the US. So I guess we are better prepared. People in the business community, in the society are more aware. Uh, we, we try to better protect our critical infrastructures. And uh, again, we do it in a, in a, in a close cooperation. But we are aware of these dangers, and uh, I think the, the the people in charge of this are very, very vigilant. 
again to ask about one of the darker uh, scenarios ahead. Uh, assuming that this war continues, that today's diplomacy is not successful in in uh, checking it, uh, and we have uh, uh, Russian conquest of major Ukrainian cities, uh, uh, occupation, uh, there is the question of whether uh, the United States, France, other Western countries should support this Ukrainian opposition to Russian occupation, if that's what it becomes. What is France's feeling about, about whether to, to help the Ukrainians resist through supplies of, of weapons and other assistance uh, as, they, as they fight against an occupation army? Well, we are doing that already with the fact that, indeed, the Ukrainians hold the, the, their cities especially the two big cities to the north, uh, Kiev and Kharkiv, in, in spite of the massive uh, use of, uh, of military force uh, by the Russian army. They fight everywhere, and we support them, of course. And there is another place where we support the Ukrainians, uh, uh, which is uh, the refugees, which, uh, and we, we commend the work made by the, the member states of the EU who are on the front line, especially Poland, but also, as we see on the TV, but also Slovakia, Hungary, and Romania, also Moldova, not a EU member state, which is on the front line. This is also a way to, to, to everybody has seen these heartbreaking pictures of uh, mothers and children saying goodbye to their husbands and fathers. And we, 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 we welcome them the, the, the Ukrainian refugees, and it is also a way to contribute to, to, to the Ukrainian people. And it is something which we do at the level of the European Union. The EU has also a very strong policy here, and the French presidency uh, organized a meeting of the first ministers on Sunday. Uh, we, we, we are active in, on all, all uh, fronts of this, of this crisis to help the Ukrainians in different ways. So we have just a minute left, uh, Mr. Ambassador. I'm going to ask you a, a qu quick uh, question. I can remember talking to you uh, in recent months, in, in the last year, when U.S.-French relations were really in a terrible situation uh, because of French anger over the AUKUS uh, submarine deal. What would be your quick summary of the state of U.S.-French relations today? Well, first, uh, they have great they have recovered after AUKUS because we had a, the the United States reached out very very quickly and including uh, and first of all the president of the United States and we had a, a very 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 um, um, uh, substantial dialogue which which led to the the declaration adopted by President Biden President Macron in Rome at the end of October and now uh, even before the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, we had developed, we had implementing this declaration, we have advanced very much in Africa, in the Indo-Pacific, and on the this, on this subject of European defense. And now we see how it is useful, especially when France is holding the presidency of the Council of the European Union, that this work has been doing, has been done, and we are uh, indeed uh, there were many conversations between the two presidents, and we are indeed seeing a very close coordination. Uh, I mentioned the preparation of the sanctions, which involves the whole of the EU, but uh, on all the aspects of this uh, of this very very serious crisis, uh, the dialogue, the cooperation, the exchange are permanent between our two countries. So, Ambassador Philippe Etienne, the French ambassador to Washington. Thank you so much for, for joining us, talking about uh, things that are happening almost as we speak. Uh, we look forward to having you back with us at Washington Post Live. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. So thank you to our viewers for joining us today. We've had our three discussions of Ukraine. Uh, we'll be continuing those through this week. If you want to look at the programming we've got ahead, go to WashingtonPostLive.com. Register for the programs that interest you. Thanks for joining us today.